part three of St. Joseph Consecration with me, Father Blood. I trust that this time of reflection has been fruitful for you, and I pray that we might continue to delve deeper into this relationship with St. Joseph. We've already spoken about the role of St. Joseph in the Holy Family, as well as the activity of the Trinity in the life of the Holy Family. And this week we're going to look a little bit into the virtues of Joseph, some of the characteristics we talk about that share just a little bit of why St. Joseph is so special. One of the titles that we use for St. Joseph is Defender of Christ. Now, we're being called to become like sons and daughters of Joseph, and in that, he defends us too against all the sort of temptations and frustrations that we experience. And he's faithful, as a father is, seeing exactly where our needs are and the places where we might feel the most under attack. In general, I think when we speak about St. Joseph, we should name the reality that he's a man of balance. He's a man who, in virtue, uh, recognizes that uh, it's in the middle, in the median, that we find uh, happiness and fulfillment. He calls us into a deeper love of justice, offering back to others what's due to them. Again, balance. Not overdoing it, not trying to go above and beyond what's expected, or instead to realize what is due another person, and then doing our best to bring that to fulfillment. Now, St. Joseph gives us a unique perspective of both prudence and chastity. He was called to a unique level of purity, being married to the ever-Virgin, Blessed Mother Mary. Now, each of us are called to a certain level of chastity, recognizing that we need not grasp at worldly pleasures. Uh, sometimes it's in sacrificing the things that maybe our flesh desires most that we can find fulfillment in who God is creating us to be. And maybe in a more general sense, when we talk about prudence, that's the queen of all virtue. So all virtue sort of begins first and foremost with that tippity top that is prudence, right? Allowing ourselves to be aware of what is God asking of us? What's the right way to kind of view a subject matter or a situation? And then allowing uh, that wisdom to dictate our actions when it comes to every other portion of our life, right? Moments of temperance, moments of justice, moments of chastity. Begin first and foremost with asking that question, what is expected right now? What is the right way to handle any given situation? And we see in the life of Joseph that he's docile to the voice of God, listening. Where is the Father asking me to go? How is the Father asking me to care for my dear family? And then he responds with his whole heart. Finally, I just want to share a little bit about faithful obedience. When I became a priest, I made certain promises, one of which is obedience to the bishop and his successors. Now, each of us are called to a level of obedience. It's not just us priests who make that formal act of obedience to the bishop. Each of us are called to recognize our place in the structure. So if God is calling us to do something, we should be obedient to his call. But that can be hard because we want to see clearly what exactly is the Lord asking? Where are we going? What are the steps? What's the result? Uh, we have that desire for control, but in obedience we're being asked to trust that the Father actually wills our good and that he'll take care of us even in the midst of situations where it feels like all control is falling from our fingertips. I think, too, to live a life of obedience, sometimes we need to slow down. It's easy to speak frustration and also name those places where we wish that we could just grab the bull by the horns. But when we're able to take a deep breath and slow down, we realize most things are not that important. Most things, day in and day out, are small. And we listen to the whisper of God. How does he want me to enter into this situation? How does he desire for me to love this person who might be difficult to love? Maybe it's a bigger question. Maybe the question is, what is the mission God is calling me into? I know that maybe some of you feel as if your time is already passed you by. Uh, you've done what the Lord has asked. Your mission is over. Maybe the kids have fl uh, flown the nest. Uh, God is not done with you. When they made it out of Egypt, 
God wasn't done with Joseph, but he remained faithful to the call of God. So maybe today what we could do is pray for the grace to see where is the Lord calling me? How is the Lord calling me? And what things am I holding on to too tightly that I'm rejecting the opportunity to be obedient and faithful to the voice of God? I realize that it can be scary. It can be tough to say, I want to go all in with the Lord. I want to go in with maybe a little bit of blind faith to what it is the Lord is asking. But if there's one person who maybe has shown us what it looks like to say yes, even without clarity, it's our pal Joseph. He didn't quite understand the fullness of what the Lord was doing with Mary and then his son Jesus, but he was faithful. He listened and he said yes. We pray for that grace to be like St. Joseph. Know of my continued prayers for you as we continue to delve through the consecration of St. Joseph. We entrust ourselves to him once again, knowing that he's drawing near to us. God bless you. Mm-hmm.